Welcome back legends, I'm Dr. Kyle and let's get right into this very quick update video. Apologies for not getting uh, a video out in the weekend, but let's get right into it legends. This is the weekly stock market map and I want to start out with the stock market map for two specific reasons. Number one, notice that it's a bit of a mixed uh, bag. We don't see a whole lot of red and a whole lot of green. It's a bit of a mix. And the interesting thing about this mix is Tesla is now improving. Google Meta is improving and more importantly, semiconductors. Look at the semiconductors have already begun to recover. As is usually the case, seasonally speaking, we tend to get this early October bounce. And I'm going to get right into that just in a second. Let's take a look at the relative performance here, Legends. Leading was energy, tech, and communication services for the week. Lagging was utilities and defensives. That's very interesting, right? Defensive sectors in the market lagged the most of the last week. Usually happens, Legends, when the stock market is actually forming a very uh, important bottom. And so that's where we are right now. We now expect that the market has bottomed last week and it's now beginning this counter trend rally in early October. And then we expect the market to, uh, to top sometime by the end of this week, early next week, and for the market to dip again for the final low for the year. So let's get right into it, Legends. This is the daily chart for the S&P 500. It is 8.24 a.m. Eastern time as of the recording of this video. So very likely the market will have already opened by the time that you see this video. And here's what we expect, Legends. Uh, to follow up on my uh, last video, we were looking at two key developments in the charts. Number one is these double bottoms on the RSI. We already had that develop last week. We're looking for the stochastic to complete a cross. We've already entered oversold conditions and the stochastic is flattening and is now getting ready for a cross. First check mark legends, RSI oversold and double bottom. We also have the stochastic in oversold territory. We have the stock market tagging this key trend support and bouncing off it. And in addition to all of that, we have seasonality on the bullish side. We usually get a bottom at the end of September and a rally to start October. That remains my expectation as of this moment. There's also a big fundamental development that happened over the weekend, and that is government shutdown has been averted and they kicked the can down the road to November. That means from now until November, we should not worry too much about a government shutdown. So we have fundamentals indicating a bounce. We have oversold technicals indicating that a bounce is coming. And we have seasonality indicating that a bounce is coming. Now, these double bottoms on the RSI with a bullish divergence have always led to bounces, right? Lower lows on the daily chart, higher lows on the RSI, we get a bounce. Lower lows on the daily chart, higher low on the RSI, we got a bounce. Same thing here, Legends. Same thing in the December bottom. Same thing in the February uh, low ahead of that counter rally. And we're now seeing pretty much the same thing. We do expect, Legends, that we will see a counter rally, something that looks like this, something that looks like this, something that looks like this, like this. And I do expect either a lower low or an equal low by the end of October. So I do expect some additional selling to begin roughly by the beginning of next week or so. And for the bottom two are uh, formed by the end of the third week of October. What about this chart? Now, the difference between this chart and the previous chart legends is that in this trend line, I only connected the closing prices and the market hasn't actually connected with the trend line. Maybe it will in October. Maybe it will this week. We don't know. But overall, even if we get a sell off uh, to start the week, I still expect a rally to begin. Now, I did mark these significant bottoms with this uh, blue box because they've been acting consistently. We get a low, a lower low, then we get a counter rally. Same thing here, Legends Low, lower low, counter rally, low, lower low, counter rally. And in most of these examples, we get the bullish divergence on the RSI established. The same thing that has happened more recently. Again, low, a lower low here. And we're now trying to bounce back again. 
We have a bullish divergence on the RSI, higher low on the RSI, and the summation index oscillator is also turning back up, indicating that a counter rally is now likely underway. Now let's talk about the VIX legends. This is the two hour chart for the VIX. We had this triple top formation, higher highs, lower highs on the PPO. This is typical of the VIX topping. That's kind of what we usually see when the VIX is topping. We're now getting this counter rally in the VIX that will likely fail and get rejected. And the market continues to rally as the VIX gives back this counter rally pretty much very likely by the end of today. What does the daily chart look like? Well, the daily chart for the VIX actually looks like it may want to push even higher still to potentially produce a rejection, huge rejection candle, something that looks like this. So I could see the VIX rising again, but I would still expect a counter rally to take place. If we also take a look at the NASDAQ relative to the S&P 500, it completed a bounce after it hit this major support line. Now, the way to extrapolate the support line is simply to multiply the width of the channel by two. As soon as you see a support line like this get broken, we simply multiply it by two. There you go. And you get the bounce exactly at that same level. In addition to that, the PPO is turning back up and the relative ratio is now rising. The NASDAQ is now outperforming the S&P 500, and that is typical of rallies, not of a defensive rotation. We often see the market rotating into tech, into the triple Qs when it is turning bullish, not bearish. Taking a look at the NASDAQ summation index, the NASDAQ summation index is trending down. However, it began to flatten at the end of last week. And in addition to that, the oscillator has already turned green. The 50-day S&P 500 breadth is now trying to hold at a logical level, the same level that we saw back in March as the market was finally putting it that final bottom. We're now seeing the same thing develop here as the S&P 500 is tagging this major trend line. We're seeing the 50-day breadth in the S&P 500 trying to make a stand here at the 15 level. The fear and greed index is now at extreme fear 25. This is not necessarily the time to try and short the market when it's extremely fearful. You want to be short when the market is greedy. You want to be long when the market is fearful. The typical saying goes, Warren Buffett basically coined this phase, be greedy when the market is fearful and be fearful when the market is greedy. Fear and greed is now at 25. We typically find stock market bottoms at these levels. And so that's still our expectation. Market momentum dipped below 125. Again, we usually get some bounces off the 125 day moving average. The put to call ratio is spiking. That is typical of stock market bottoms. Again, we just need to start seeing the VIX cooling down. The VIX needs to start cooling down. It began to cool down last week. However, it bounced at the 10 day moving average. We want to see the VIX close below the 10 day moving average that that will allow the market to recover just a bit more. Now, in terms of targets, legends, I still expect to see this gap get filled at 438.7, potentially slightly higher to 440. But at 440, that's where I expect the stock market to fail and get rejected very likely as this 50 day moving average turns back down. In terms of economic events today, we have the ISM manufacturing PMI. Tomorrow, we'll have the JOLTS job openings. And Wednesday, we will have the ISM services PMI. Thursday, we'll have the initial jobless claims. And Friday, we have the all-important unemployment rate. Seasonally speaking, we tend to get this counter rally in early October. Then that rally tends to fade by the second week of October and we tend to get a crash by the third week of October and a bottom developing rough, roughly by the beginning of the fourth week of October. And then we tend to make higher lows and higher highs ahead of the seasonally bullish holiday season in November and December. If you want to trade the market with me, check out the Money Time Machine trading community. The link will be in the description below to join us through Patreon. It's about 35 bucks a month if you go for the annual membership. It's a single annual payment. However, it averages out to roughly 35 bucks a month. 
and it's the absolute best way to support the channel and allow me to bring more of these videos to you legends completely for free. I'll be back with a comprehensive monthly uh, update very soon. So stay tuned. If you enjoyed the video, slap that like button on your way out. If you watched till the end and you did not enjoy the video, I thank you for your time and attention. That's all I got for you today, legends. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, wow.